In this video, we'll talk about acceleration. <coughs> Excuse me. And from our example, all right, let's assume that we have the position is moving along a horizontal line where positive direction is to the right, and the position is given by t squared minus 4t um, plus 3, and that the velocity was the we saw in the last video was the derivative of position, so it was 2t minus 4. And let's, and we had gone through there. Now, if we would take and start with the velocity function, and let's calculate over an interval from t to t plus h, let's calculate the, the average, um, and this should have been the average velocity, okay? All right, we take the change in time, all right, which would be h, all right, and that's going to be the, then then calculate the change in velocity. So that would be v at the left end, v of t, which would be two t minus four, and t at the at the right end, v at the right end is going to be um, two times the quantity t plus h minus 4, which would be 2t plus 2h minus 4. And now if we subtract things, if we subtract things, all right, we'll get um, basically, you know, the, take the velocity at the right end minus the velocity at the left end. So we'll get 2t minus 2t. So those cancel off. We get 2h, all right? And that does, there's nothing that subtracts off with that. Negative 4 minus a negative 4, those subtract off. So this just becomes 2h. And now if we calculate the change in velocity divided by the change in time, all right, we simply get 2. All right, this is known as the average acceleration. All right, to find the acceleration, we'll take the limit as h approaches 0 of 2, all right, and that, of course, is 2, all right, and this is the average, this is, I should say, the instantaneous acceleration. Now, now again, look at what we've done here. We've taken the limit as h approaches 0, and let me, um, we've taken the limit as h approaches 0, of the change in velocity divided by the change in time, all right, which is basically the limit as h approaches 0 of v of t plus h minus v of t, all divided by h, which is the derivative of the velocity function. So acceleration is the derivative of the velocity function. So, so now we have the following. We have position. All right, s of t, velocity, which is s prime of t, and now acceleration, a of t, which is the der first derivative of velocity, or it's the second derivative of acceleration, because if we take the derivative of velocity, we're taking the derivative of the derivative of acceleration. All right, so let's let's take a look. Let's find the, the acceleration at times t equals 1. Well, if you've forgotten what this was, all right, well, the, we, the position is t squared minus 4t, so the velocity is the derivative of position, which is 2t minus 4, and the acceleration is the derivative of velocity, or the second derivative of position, which is 2, uh, and so the velocity, the acceleration at times t is equal to 1 would be 2. Acceleration in this, for this object is always going to be 2. 
All right, now let's take a look at what we have. Remember, all right, the position here at times t is equal to 1, it, the position is 0. It's located at 0, neither to the left or, or to the right of 0. All right, the velocity, if you recall, was negative 2. Okay, the velocity was negative 2. And the acceleration, all right, the, we had a negative slope. The acceleration was 2, and the acceleration is a second derivative, so we can see that that we have a positive acceleration because this thing is concave up, okay? So since the acceleration at time t is equal to 1 is 2, s is concave up at t equals 1, okay? Because remember, this acceleration was greater than 0. If the second derivative was positive, the, the, the function was concave up. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. So, so what we want to keep in mind is, is we want to look at these the way we did before, all right, is we had an independent variable. This time it's t, all right. The function itself, the position function that is here, gave us like the y value. Now it gives us the position, all right. The first derivative gave us the slope, but the now that's the velocity, so the slope of the position function is the velocity. The second derivative gave us the concavity, but now the concavity is the acceleration. Okay, so we want to be careful, compare those. The y-coordinate tells us where we're located. The slope tells us how fast we're going in which direction, whether it's positive or negative. And the concavity tells us about our acceleration. Okay, now there's an idea of whether an object is speeding up. Remember, speed is the absolute value of acceleration, and, and notice in this case, right, well, the absolute value of any number just tells how far that is from zero. So if this is our velocity, this is our velocity, then this distance right here would be our speed. Now, if, if our acceleration is positive, if our acceleration is positive, that means the velocity is getting bigger. Now, if the, velocity, if the acceleration is positive, the velocity is getting bigger. All right, so if the, if the velocity is getting bigger, look what's happening to the speed. The speed is also getting bigger. So if the, excel, if the velocity is positive and the acceleration are positive, the speed is getting bigger. If the velocity is positive and the acceleration is negative, well, if the acceleration is negative, that means that, that v prime is negative. So v is getting smaller. So if the velocity is positive and the acceleration is negative, all right, look at what's happening to speed. Speed is getting smaller. All right, let's suppose that the velocity is negative. We're, now, if the acceleration is positive, all right, that means the velocity is getting bigger, so we're moving in the, the velocity is moving in the positive direction. Notice what's happening to speed. If the velocity is negative and the acceleration is positive, speed, speed, um, this is, is getting smaller. If, on the other hand, the velocity is negative and the acceleration is negative, well, that means the when the acceleration is negative, it means the velocity is getting smaller. So if the velocity is negative and getting smaller, look at what's happening to the speed. The speed is getting bigger. All right, let's make a little table of, of values, I guess we should say. Oops, let's see here. Oh. Okay, let's scroll back up here. All right, let's make a table of values, all right? Okay, so we have here the velocity, all right? And it could be either positive or negative. The acceleration, and it could be either positive or negative, all right? And then let's take a look at what happens to the speed. Well, remember, if the velocity was positive, okay, in that the previous diagram we were to the right, if the acceleration were, were um, 
were positive okay the the velocity would be to the right of zero and moving to the right so that the speed would be getting bigger so here we'd be speeding up if the velocity was positive and the acceleration was negative the velocity is to the right of zero but moving to the left so the distance to zero the speed is getting smaller we're slowing down If the velocity was negative, so we're to the left of zero, but the acceleration were positive, the velocity is moving to the right, it's getting bigger, then the distance to zero, the speed, is getting smaller, so again we're slowing down. And if the velocity were negative, we're to the left of, of zero, the velocity was to the left of zero, and the acceleration were negative, so the velocity is moving to the left, the distance is zero, the speed is getting larger, so here we would be speeding up. Notice, notice where, where we're speeding up. We're speeding up when the velocity and acceleration have the same sign, either both positive or both negative. All right, if the velocity and acceleration have opposite signs, velocity is positive, acceleration is negative, we're slowing down, or velocity is negative, acceleration is positive, we're slowing down. So same signs, imply speeding up. And of course, when I say same signs, I mean same signs on the velocity and the acceleration. Different signs imply that we're slowing down. Okay, and again, different signs on the velocity acceleration. So let's take a look at this. Let's ask this question. First of all, all right, if I look at the position, okay, all right, the position uh, for this function, this is a position function, this is s of t, the, somehow the, the t did not come out too, to the, the parentheses around t didn't come out too well. But if I look at this, the position, the position is, is positive. We're to the right because we're above the t-axis. The velocity, remember, is the slope, and the slope is positive. The acceleration is the concavity. We're concave up, so the acceleration is positive. They have the same signs. We're speeding up. So in this instance, at this point, time t is equal to 4, we'd be speeding up. Let's take a look at another example. All right. In this case, we're below the t-axis, so the position is negative. We're in negative location. The velocity is the, is the slope. The velocity is positive. And I guess I didn't allow for this. There's no concavity. It's a straight line. So, so the, the acceleration would be zero here. We're not concave up, not a positive acceleration, not concave down, not a negative acceleration. So the acceleration would be zero. And in this case, we're... Um, we're neither speeding up nor slowing down. We're neither speeding up nor slowing down. Let's take a look at this. Okay, In this case, the position is zero. We're on the t-axis. The velocity, the slope, is positive. All right. The concavity is negative. So these velocity and acceleration have opposite signs. We must be slowing down. Okay. Let's try one more. Okay, the position here is negative. We're below the t-axis. The, velo the velocity is a slope. We have a negative slope, so the velocity is negative. We're concave down, so the acceleration is negative. And since they both have the same sign, we must be speeding up. All right. Okay. So let's ask this question. 
what intervals is this object speeding up and slowing down? Well, let's see. All right, what we're going to have to do in this case is if we look at this, if we look at the velocity function, all right, this changes at 2. So let me just draw a 2 here. Notice the velocity is negative to the left of 2 and positive to the right. The acceleration, remember if you the acceleration was always 2, so the acceleration was always positive. Here the velocity and the acceleration have different signs, so we're slowing down. Excuse me, here they have the same sign, so we're speeding up. So the question was, on what inter intervals is this speeding up? Well, it looks like it's speeding up on the interval from 2 to infinity. So that would be the interval on which this is speeding up. Uh, let's see, I better, well, let's take a look at this, all right? Okay, suppose that the position function is cosine of t, all right? Find the intervals on which the object is speeding up and slowing down. So here's the position function, okay? Here's the velocity function, and here's the, the, um, acceleration function. So the position function is cosine the velocity function is negative sine, all right, and the acceleration um, is negative cosine. So let's take a look, all right, on this interval, okay, notice the slope is negative, the velocity is negative, all right, okay, uh, I'm sorry, on this interval, notice the velocity is negative and the acceleration is negative. The velocity would be the slope of this in the concavity. So, so notice that that since the velocity is negative and the acceleration is negative, we're speeding up. I'll just write up, okay? Here, the velocity is negative. I'm looking at, this is a velocity function. Remember, it gives me the slope of this function. Velocity is negative. The concavity, the acceleration is positive. So we're so they have different signs, so we're slowing down. On this interval, velocity is positive above the t-axis, acceleration is positive, so we're speeding up. And on this interval, velocity is positive, acceleration is negative, we're slowing down. All right, so which ones, or which intervals are we speeding up on? It looks like 0 to pi over 2, and from pi to 3 pi over 2. Where are we slowing down? The other ones, the other intervals. So pi over 2 to pi and 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. Okay. All right, and so those are the, that's the relationship between velocity and acceleration. All right, remember position. Uh, if, if we start with a position function, first derivative is velocity, second derivative is acceleration. If the, the, the speed is the absolute value of velocity, if the velocity and the acceleration have the same signs, we're speeding up. If they have opposite signs, we're slowing down.